tonight on one of our subjects is nothing. Hi folks, in this video we're going to talk about the differences between an AT motherboard and an ATX motherboard. So what we have here is a modern late gigabyte motherboard with the 72 pin SIMS and the 168 pin SD RAM alongside with the AT power supply connector and the ATX power supply connector. So therefore this thing is, is uh, ACPI ready. The few major things that are actually different from here is first of all the only onboard integrated connector is that 5 pin keyboard. Modern motherboards or ATX motherboards have everything on board. On AT systems this is actually true but you have to actually hook up their own respective wires to the motherboard themselves and I do believe this is the USB panel. It's a little bit uh, a little bit uh, dusty I'd say eh, but it does the job. This is an Intel uh, chipset. Some of them do have an AGP, uh, an AGP slot. This one does not. This one has the voltages for Pentium MMX processors, has the latest CR2032 CMOS battery, and has the hybrid AT ATX connectors. A lot of uh, AT systems and very early ATX systems required jumpers and dip switches like these. Now, as we can see here, this is the voltage, se uh, the voltage settings, which you can find here. This thing, I believe, has the frequency setting and the AT or ATX power management. On modern ATX motherboards like this one, there is no such things. There is a few jumpers like here to clear the CMOS and the USB headers and whatnot, but they pretty much stay the same. Processor on the top memory on the right and the expansion on the bottom while it's here most of the time the CPU is on the bottom right sometimes like you can see the socket 3 is a little bit on the top right memory normally resides here on the top or on some baby AT systems they reside here the the plugs I mean the connectors are usually sitting around there unless if you need a multi IO card like this one and the expansions take pretty much the rest of the room beforehand they used the nickel cadmium rechargeable batteries that were here but they were getting old they leaked they corrode the system uh, they corrode the system board circuitry so it wasn't a good idea over time so they switched with that modern CMOS battery but they're in between there is something in between I'm going to show you that this one has and I find bullshit now before we begin by showing you the CMOS battery this thing uses a lot of compact or IBM boards or branded computer systems that were with AT power had their on had their plugs on board too like VGA and everything whatnot these ones is where I have a problem with let me show you now custom builds like this you have to pry the entire thing open. And that can get annoying putting back in. And then it reveals the computer version of Skeletor. Main problem? Well, first of all, I see the spaghetti splat of gray wires here. I actually took the time to uh, reconfigure as much as possible here. Instead of using slots, that can actually cause a problem and whatnot. I actually have a 5 pin to 6 pin for the keyboard because I actually managed to run out of 5 pin keyboards. Now this is the CPU right here. This is a Pentium 166. It, orig it originally came with the Pentium 120. And this is a CMOS I have a problem with. Those stupid little shits right here. This one is a Dallas uh, CMOS clock. Uh, this is actually a chip. When the battery dies, you gotta replace the chip. This is annoying. Now this was actually with uh, equipped with uh, an Odin, O-D-I-N, uh, CMOS chip. But you can also use these. The Dallas, are, Dallas and Odin are same pin compatible. 
Over here we have level 1 cash. I don't think I need it. This actually is new enough to support the uh, voltages for a uh, Pentium MMX. This is why, hence why I have that. And we have a bit of integrated cache right here. You can't see it well. That's actually a gigabyte motherboard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, about that. I don't have all the screws, but that's my VGA video card. And uh, what is it? Rendition PCI video card. I think that's like an ATI. Uh, let's verify here. It says Diamond Multimedia on the back. This is the uh, floppy disk cable I just plucked out the video card and the whole thing fell a 10100 PCI Ethernet a cheap ass model of a sound card and we have the modem right down here With the actual coil speaker right here most of the times used to have large visa local bus cars these were actually guides for those cars that were very long floppy drive quantum bigfoot I believe this is a 3.2 gigabyte drive 52x and someone actually got to the fact of buying a CD burner 52, 32, 52. You can't get them any faster than that. And when I had it, this is a little bit of a problem. This is not supposed to be like this. You pop it off and there you go. This is your turbo indicator. That you can adjust with the jumpers. You can you can barely see them. If not, right there. But the turbos does not work. It changes this, but that's it. On ATX systems like this one, they normally have a power and a reset. Eh, well, it's stuck. On AT systems, you have the power, reset, and turbo button. The turbo button actually is to slow down the system if you're running DOS games and it, they just go... You just hit that and it slows it down. Reset is reset, and the power is... You hit it once and it stays on and you hit it again to s turn it off. Over there if you do this, you turn it on, it turns on but if you press it again it won't turn off unless if you're at the post it'll think you know you're turning it off, if not you have to hold. There's no such thing there, you just press it, it turns on. And there's the power wire right here that is connected straight to the power supply itself. Which brings me to the biggest problem. If a thunderstorm would strike and a power surge would occur, AT systems would normally just go up in blaze and fire. And if they did not have any protection inside to shut to shut themselves off, then it will just run and never be able to stop because the wire says, "Hey, I'm powered on. I'm keeping on running. Got to keep on running." And then it just it just blows up. And it just, you see all this go. That's my biggest concern about AT systems. On ATX, that's not just the case. If it blows up, they've got diodes and protectors in the power supply. Now, depending on what kind of power supplies you got. Here's a prime example of an ATX power supply and its AT counterpart. Some of them include these for earlier monitors that were just plugged in right here. That's actually a plus. These ones don't have them. There's an interruptible switch these ones don't have any your interruptible switch actually here is your power button in front and they have their specs here I believe they have their specs up top sometimes on the right happens with anything that doesn't do any difference this one's not auto ranging nor is this one that's pretty much to be expected and I got a wire problem. Right there is your AT plug. There are two plugs, you can actually interchange them if you want, but the grounds must be in the middle. If you switch them around, kaboom goes your system. On ATX, these plugs are mostly common 20 pin, 20, 24 pin, 
and they only go one way. If you force them the other way, then kaboom again, but you gotta be a dumbass to do that. Most systems also require a 4-pin or 8-pin, as opposed to the earlier versions that only needed the 20-pin connector. This one actually is a 20 plus 4-pin connector. Uh, you can remove them just by unclipping it and it becomes a 20-pin, whatever. So that's the bay. So that's so that's pretty much it for that. It's only the basics. Anything. Um, the only major difference is is AT system, not as opposed to this one. If they don't have a 20-pin ATX connection, means that they're completely ACPI incapable. They're they don't have any standby. Well, they do, but the power is always on. But the um, anything like to turn off your computer you know they don't you just go shut down and it just turns off by themselves like this but over that over them so that's basically it for that I just wanted to give a basic differences if you want to go in more details you can go ahead and hit the internet for that but uh, we went a long way from AT to an ATX and for those of you who use BTX systems, BTX is an ATX form, just not everything's different in as in CPUs on the right, memories on top, and the expansions on the bottom left. So that's barely that's so that's it. I just wanted to give a uh, basic. Uh, differences between the AT and ATX motherboards and most of the times people who had AT systems would remember this it's now safe to sh turn off your computer that's right which is systems that are not ACPI compliant are not going to shut down by themselves especially if your power button is always stuck to stay on and before we finish, let's have a little bonus. I'm going to start this piece of thing up. I hope my keyboard is going to work. That thing is not too, too happy when it uses a converter. But here it goes. Wow, the keyboard actually works. Good. That's what I want. It still retains its settings, which means my CMOS is still going. My CMOS clock, chip, blech. It's a Stealth 2 4 meg video card. Has an Intel 430 VX PCI ISA chipset, 64 megs of RAM. It, orig it originally shipped with, I believe, 24 but I have upgraded it to 64. It's a 4.3 gig. And off we go. That's uh, running 98. Oh <sighs> boy. Yep. I'm going to need some work on that thing. Yeah, a USB to PS2 doesn't really like it here, anyways. Oh look, it found an unknown device. What the? I think there's still some work left on that one. <laughs> Alright, well, while it's on, I might as well do the extra adjustment. If you have any comments, questions, or anything that I've missed that I did not cover in this video, please feel free to leave a comment down below if you have one.